In section 8.3, we'll answer two questions that are related, and both of them have to do with finding the most efficient route through a map, for instance, or a graph, more specifically, as we're doing in this chapter. So if you've ever wondered when you pull up your um, navigation system and you enter your destination and it picks a route for you, if you ever wondered how it decides what roads to take from point A to point B, or even in some video games there are simple navigation systems. Uh, if you're building a robot that's going to navigate its way through a room, if you ever wondered how those things work, they're all built off of one tool that we're going to learn a little bit about in this section. So we're going to actually see the basic form of a navigation system in this section. So the first thing is to look at what we call a weighted graph, and we've seen examples of this before. It's basically a graph where each edge has some sort of what we call a weight or a cost associated with it. This could be the amount of time it takes to travel from one point to another along that edge, or it could be the distance, or it could be actually the cost if you're thinking about um, fuel costs, for instance, or the cost of a ticket from one location to another. But these are basically numbers that we want to keep as low as possible. That's the idea of a cost or a weight. Generally, we're looking for a path that has the lowest possible cost um, through this graph. So there are two questions that we'll look at related to finding the shortest path. And when we talk about the length of a path, we mean if you add up the weights as you travel from one point to another along multiple edges, you can add up all those weights to get the total length, the total weight of that route that you're traveling. So we'll call these two problems the mail delivery problem, where you're trying to uh, deliver letters or packages to a bunch of different places. And so your goal is to visit each node in the graph as efficiently as possible. So that's one process. Think about like a UPS driver who has a bunch of packages and they need to plan out a route. So they need a a systematic process for finding a good route through this um, set of deliveries. And then the other process is not that you need to go to each location, you just want to go from one location to another as efficiently as possible. And so you'll travel through some other nodes along the way, but you don't need to visit all of them. So that's like a navigation problem where you're trying to travel just from point A to point B along some roads, through some intersections, and so on. But again, with both of them, you're trying to do it with the lowest possible total cost. That's the goal. This mail delivery problem, the more famous name for it is called the traveling salesperson problem. And it's a famous uh, question of how to find the most efficient route touching all of the nodes in a graph as efficiently as possible. So we're gonna learn about two algorithms one for each of these problems. And don't be intimidated by the word algorithm, it's just a systematic process. If you do any cooking and you follow a recipe, that's an algorithm. It's just a systematic process that you follow these steps and at the end you have a result. So it's just this very simple generic concept that just means a systematic approach to solving a problem, a problem solving method that will work on all these problems. Generally, what you'll find in algorithms in computer science, which is where they come up a lot, is that there tends to be some repetition. Um, tends to be a step that you would repeat over and over again until you're done. And we'll see that as we go through these examples. So we're going to have two algorithms. One's called the nearest neighbor algorithm, and it's a really simple one uh, to handle this mail delivery or traveling salesperson problem. And then for the navigation problem, the algorithm's a little bit more complicated, but the math is still very, very simple. And this is named for a Dutch computer scientist. Uh, it's called Dijkstra's algorithm. So we'll get into that a little bit later as well. So the nearest neighbor algorithm, we're gonna start with this example. You can read through this in detail, but basically we have five cities in Maryland here, and we're gonna look for the most efficient route covering all five cities. So you imagine someone who had to travel to all five cities on some route. And you could take any route you want through these because they're all connected to each other. So you could go directly from Frederick to Annapolis and then over to Columbia and then down to Rockville and then up to Baltimore. That would be one potential route. 
So you can either see the information with a picture like this, or you'll sometimes see it in a table, and the homework kind of alternates back and forth, so you should be familiar with both. This table lists the distance between any pair of cities. So from Frederick to Baltimore is 45 miles. You can also see that visually here, Frederick and Baltimore, there's 45 miles between them. And the same for all the others. Notice that this table is kind of symmetric. The distance from Frederick to Baltimore is the same as the distance from Baltimore to Frederick, naturally. So you can read through that and make sure that, that it all makes sense as far as how the information is given. So if you wanted to find the most efficient route through here, one way to do it is to find all the routes, there are 12 of them, all the circuits, so notice that we're starting at Frederick and ending at Frederick. If we picked a different starting and ending route, it would look a little different, but assuming that's where we start and end, we have 12 possible ways to travel through this graph. And we've listed the distance for each of them. So for instance, from Frederick to Baltimore to Annapolis, Rockville, then Columbia, and back to Frederick, you would add up the distances along each edge on that route, and you get the total distance of 154. So the lowest possible total distance is this 132 that um, runs from Fre Frederick to Rockville to Annapolis, then Baltimore and Columbia, and back to Frederick. Now, if you tried to do that for every problem, for ones with relatively small sets like this, you can do this. And you could have a computer spit out the answer for you like this. But it turns out that this really quickly becomes impractical if the number of cities increases. So if there were 25 stops, which would be very, very small for a local mail delivery, they would have many more stops than that, but just 25 stops. If you could check one path every nanosecond, it would take you 10 million years to find the lengths of all of them. So it's just not practical to solve this problem by brute force, which is this approach of just listing all the possibilities and looking for the best out of them. So we need another way to do this. We need another approach. The approach we use is called the nearest neighbor algorithm, which the nearest neighbor algorithm isn't going to automatically give you the absolute best answer, but it's going to give you an answer that's pretty good. And you'll see that with the example in a minute. We're not gonna get this perfect ideal answer of 132, but we'll get one that's pretty close to it, and it's much, much easier to do than listing all the possibilities. So it's a very simple algorithm. Again, the repetition is you just repeatedly, from wherever you start, you repeatedly go to the nearest node that you haven't visited yet. So you keep track of which ones you visited, and at each step, you look at all the distances from where you are and pick the shortest one that will take you somewhere you haven't been yet. And you just keep doing that until you've visited all of them, and then you're done. So again, it's not gonna give you the absolute best, but it's a, a good way to get close. And this is an example of what's called a greedy algorithm because it's basically taking the best step at each, or the best possibility at each step, and it doesn't sort of think globally, it just looks for right now what's my best option, which is kind of this idea of being greedy and taking the best option at the moment. But it tends to work fairly well. So for instance, if we wanna start and end at Frederick, we would start in Frederick, and the shortest distance to any city from Frederick is Rockville, so we go to Rockville first. And then from here, the shortest distance anywhere is to Columbia, so we go to Columbia next. And then from here, the shortest is to Baltimore, so we go to Baltimore. And then the shortest distance from Baltimore is back to Columbia, but we've already been there. So we pick the shortest distance to one we haven't visited yet, which would be the 21 miles to Annapolis. So we go from Frederick to Rockville to Columbia, Baltimore, Annapolis, and then back. And if you do that, you don't get 132 miles, but you get 139, which is only a little bit longer than the best possible result. And again, it's much, much easier to do this than listing all the possibilities. So that's the nearest neighbor algorithm. Again, very simple, very straightforward uh, to complete. The other question, the question of navigation, of finding the optimal route from point A to point B, regardless of what you need to pass through, uh, uses what's called Dijkstra's algorithm. So it's a little more complicated, but the math is really simple. It's just a matter of keeping track of what you're doing. Um, but you should read through this description carefully, and the short version is that at each step, you basically keep track of your best possible route from 
point A to every other point. So basically we start by saying from point A we can get to point B in a distance of 4 or to F in a distance of 3. And then we would say we've found those two distances. So the best, the shortest route to point B is 4, the shortest route to point F is 3. And then to get to point C we would say okay we could either get here through B which has a current best distance of 4 plus the two extras for a total of 6. So if we want to get to C by going through B we would need a total cost of 6. If we want to get there through F we would need a total cost of 8. So the best possibility there is to go through B so the best shortest distance to C would be 6 from A. And then you just repeat this for all the others. Then you move to E and you say okay for this one now um, what's the best shortest route to E? We could go through F or we could go through B and C which would obviously be worse or we could do some more roundabout thing but the shortest way is to go through F and it sort of expands out from A. So from A to itself has a distance of 4 and then we would find the distance to the next ones, its neighbors, and then we would kind of go out one more level to those neighbors and then keep going until we run into the point we want to get to, which would be D. So you can read through the details here, but basically that's what's happening. And at each step you're updating the distances at these other uh, nodes as you expand out from there. So you should read carefully through the description and make sure you go through each step very carefully and see where each of these numbers came from, but eventually you get to the final answer of the best uh, distance, the best path from point A to point D. So it looks complicated when you actually write it down, but notice the uh, repetition here. So basically you start with the initial distances from your starting point. So the distance at that starting point is zero because it doesn't take any distance to get to itself. And then you first list infinity for all the others, just so that we can keep track of the fact that we haven't visited them yet. Their distance is, is unknown. And then the rep repeated step, notice that step three is just to repeat step two. So the step you repeat is you pick whichever one has the smallest current distance that we haven't already checked off and you update the distances to its neighbors. So you go out basically one step, one wave forward with its neighbors, and then you continue doing this until you finish. So again, you can go through these examples very carefully, uh, watch the videos for them, and it'll go through step by step how to do this. And then there's another example for you to practice where I give you the graph here, and then here's the result, the final table you would build, so you should go through and try doing it and see if you can get that answer uh, and get it figured out. And then another try it example there. So this section has basically these two algorithms that solve two types of problems. One where we want to travel to all the nodes in a graph as efficiently as possible. We use the nearest neighbor algorithm. And the other where we just want to travel from one point to the other as efficiently as possible and that uses Dijkstra's algorithm. So again, you should go through and, and read the descriptions carefully and watch the videos. The nearest neighbor algorithm is very simple. Dijkstra's is a little more complicated, but again, you're not doing any super complicated math. It's just a matter of keeping track of what you've found so far.